Amen. Amen. Let's all stand. Just lift a hand towards the Lord and let's pray. Father, we thank you we can come here on this, this beautiful Easter Sunday morning to worship you, to be in your presence. Holy Spirit, having your, your way in our lives, in this church, in this service. And Lord Jesus, we pray that you just give everybody the supernatural revelation this morning that you're alive. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. amen and amen. Let's worship the Lord.
You may be seated. Amen. Birthdays? Any birthdays that we've missed? Give the Lord a hand clap offering your praise for the worship. Nice job, guys. Amen. A blessing. Let's just um, pray over the offering. Father, we thank you that we can worship you with songs and, and praises, and we can also worship you through giving. And Lord, we ask that you would bless these tithes and offerings. Multiply them to your kingdom's use. Bless the gifts and bless the givers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You can bring forward your tithes and offerings, place them in a basket, greet a neighbor, and children's church can line up at the door. There we go, test. I usually have my sermon on top, but I looked and I had, still had Palm Sunday, so it was on the bottom. That's okay, it's here. Made me a little nervous. I said, I'll have to just wing it. Hallelujah. But let's just pray to receive the word this morning. Just pray after me and say, Father God, I thank you that your only begotten Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, He's alive from the dead. He lives today. And I declare it this morning. My Savior lives. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. This is uh, what we call Resurrection Sunday. You know, and I, I felt really bad. I saw something on Fox News where I think it was New York City, they sent a reporter, usually Jesse Waters is on there, but he sent somebody out in place of him and asked him what Easter was. And I think they talked to maybe 10 people, and only one girl really knew it was, was about Jesus rising from the dead. They talked about Easter bunnies, they talked about other stuff, they had no clue. We're living in a different world today. You know, most people in, in my younger generation here all went to church and Sunday school, but we got whole generations of people who have never been to church. They have no clue who Jesus is, what he did, and they have no clue about Easter or anything else. They just, they're just living their lives and folks, if you're living your life without Jesus, it's not really a, any life at all. Amen? Amen? Amen. Well, today we're going to celebrate, even if the world, a lot of the world is kind of blind to things, we're going to celebrate Christ's victory over sin, hell, death, and guess what else? The grave. Hallelujah. Easter Sunday is the day we can shout, He's alive. 
And you know, everything that Jesus said during his earthly ministry, everything that he did, people could question. But when somebody dies on a cross, is put in a tomb, and he rises from the dead, that answers all the questions. What does that mean? It means that every single thing Jesus said was absolutely true, and he proved them all on Resurrection Sunday. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. What do I mean? I mean Buddha, Muhammad, you can look at all the spiritual leaders. Folks, they all went in the ground and the worms ate them. Amen? Jesus was in the tomb three days and he rose again. And what was the day that he rose? Easter Sunday. Hallelujah. Our Savior is not just another historical character with a lot of great stories and very good teachings that lived about 2,000 years ago, and he died, and that was the end of him. No, he lives and reigns forever. He was eternal before he was born, made incarnate, and he is still eternal today. He is still fully man and fully God, seated at the right hand of God the Father. Hallelujah. And you know, the world is depressing, folks. I just have to say that. If televisions weren't so expensive, my shoe would be right through it. But I know that, number one, I'd have to fix it, and number two, my wife would probably kill me. But you know, when you think about Jesus rising from the dead, folks, we have a reason for hope. We have a reason to be optimistic, because if Jesus defeated death, hell, and the grave, there's nothing in this world that can defeat us. Amen. As a matter of fact, people sometimes like to argue. There are those in seminaries, well, he didn't really die. He didn't really raise from the dead. But you know what? If you were nailed to a cross, had a spear stuck in your side, spent three days wrapped up in a tomb, and then were seen by over 500 eyewitnesses just at one time. Let me read it to you. 1 Corinthians 15, 3. It says, For I delivered to you first of all that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and he was buried, and he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures, and he was seen by Cephas, meeting Peter, and then the twelve, and then he was seen by over 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain to the present, But some have fallen asleep, some have died. After that, he was seen by James and all the apostles. Then, last of all, he was seen by me also as one born out of due time. Who wrote that? The Apostle Paul was knocked off his high horse who was persecuting the church. And Jesus came and showed up with him alive from the dead. Now, I want to back up a little bit because one thing I've noticed about Scripture, Scripture is powerful just in a verse, sometimes just a part of a verse, but when you pull things into context, they take on so much power and give so much light and revelation that sometimes it it pays to look at the bigger picture. And that's especially true with Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. So I want to back up before Jesus's triumphant entry into Jerusalem, Palm Sunday, which we celebrated last week. And there was something that had never been seen before, something that would take place again on Easter Sunday. Go with me to John chapter 11, and we're going to read just a little bit about Lazarus and his house. There was a certain man sick, Lazarus of Bethany, the town Mary and her sister Martha, um, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary who anointed Jesus with fragrant oil and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore the sisters sent to him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. And when Jesus heard that, he said, the sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God that the Son of God may be glorified through it. 
Now Jesus loved Martha and her, sis, and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard he was sick, what did he do? He stayed two more days where he was. What did he do when he heard he was sick? He just stayed there. He didn't go to him. He even said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. You say, Pastor, this is Easter Sunday. What are you doing way back with the death of Lazarus? Well, because the two are tied together. Because, you know, Easter Sunday is not just the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why do we worship on Sunday? Because it's our day. It's my day. It's your day if you know Jesus. It's the day you were alive from the dead, too. And I'm going to explain that in just a minute. Well, the reason he waited that God would be glorified, and I want to read on in John eleven seven. 7. It says, after he said this to the disciples, he said, then after he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again, and the disciples said to him, Rabbi, lately the Jews sought to stone you. Are you going there again? And Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours in a day? If anyone walks in a day, he does not stumble, but he who sees the light of this world, because he sees the light of this world. But if one walks in the night, he stumbles, because the light is not in him. These things he said, and after that he said to them, our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I go that I might wake him. Then his disciples said, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get well. However, Jesus spoke of his death, but they thought he was speaking about taking rest in sleep. You know, you'll find something with the disciples, folks, not to be critical, but they never got it. No matter what Jesus told them, and I talked a little bit about this last week, they had a certain mindset, and it was hard. It was hard. To, you had to pretty much get eye contact and say, read my lips. Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I'm glad for your sakes I was not there, that you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go to him. Lazarus was dead, and Jesus said, I'm glad. You know why he's glad, folks, that Lazarus was dead? For their sakes and for our sakes. Because the resurrection of Jesus Christ is just not something that he did that we read about, folks. On Easter Sunday, that's the day that all of us rose from the grave. Hallelujah, in Christ. Well, Lazarus was dead. Jesus knew it. And his disciples, here again, probably thought Jesus was just completely out of his mind. They had no idea. Well, if he's dead, why didn't you go pray for him? But he held off. He held off so that we could understand the resurrection Amen. today. You see, if all you get out of Easter Sunday is Jesus is alive... You've missed more than half of it, I would say. Because Easter Sunday, folks, is bigger than the resurrection of Jesus Christ alone. Yeah, he died. He took his life back up. He, he rose up from the grave. He left an empty tomb. But I'll tell you what. We have church on Sunday because Sunday was the day of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Sunday is a reminder of our victory in Christ with his resurrection. And the death of Lazarus was Jesus preparing the church to understand what was going to happen on Easter Sunday. That was for God's glory. John eleven sixteen. 16, then Thomas, who was called a twin, said to his fellow disciples, let us go that we might also die with him. Again, they really understood things well. So when Jesus came, he found he'd already been in the tomb four days. And now Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles away, and many of the Jews joined the women around Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. And now Martha, as soon as he heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary was sitting in the house. 
Now, Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you'd been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Folks, there are a lot of different countenances you see at a funeral. Everybody's sad. They're going to miss that loved one. But it's different. It is different for unbelievers than it is for believers. Everyone knew Jesus could have healed Lazarus if he'd been there. But now he was dead, and people thought, well, he's dead, he's been in the tomb four days. That's it. It's over with. Folks, when we die, I need to tell you something. I mean, these bodies are mortal bodies. They get old, they get frail. Things happen. People live, people die. But if you know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, folks, you will never die. And Martha said, but even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. <clears throat> Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know he will rise in the resurrection at the last day. Well, Martha had been listening to some teachings. Then Jesus said something strange. Jesus had a way of just getting head, people's heads spinning around. He said to her about the resurrection, he said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall what? Live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe you are the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. I added the word Messiah because that's what she meant. You see, the timing of this is important because it's before Good Friday. It's before Palm Sunday. It's before, of course, Easter Sunday when Jesus rose from the dead. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he die, he shall live. What was Jesus trying to teach the disciples and us before Resurrection Sunday? It was this, that the resurrection wasn't just about Jesus. Because if we believe in him, though we may die, we shall live. But you know, Jesus did more than just say it. He proves it. Let's read on John eleven twenty-eight. 28. And when she had said these things, she went away and secretly called Mary, her sister, saying, The teacher has come and is calling you. As soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into the town, but was in the place where Martha met him. Then the Jews who were with her in the house and comforting her, when they saw that Mary rose up quickly and went out, followed her, saying, She is going to the tomb to weep there. Then Mary came to the place, came to where Jesus was and saw him. She fell down at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Therefore Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her weeping, he groaned in the spirit. Who groaned? Jesus did. And was troubled. And he said, where have you laid him? And they said to him, Lord, come and see. This is the shortest verse in the entire Bible. It says, Jesus wept. He wept. Don't ever let the devil tell you 
that our God just doesn't care because he does. Jesus wept. Why did he weep? Think about this. Why would he weep? You think he didn't know that he was going to raise Lazarus from the dead? He absolutely, positively knew what was going to happen that day. It was planned. He was directed. He wasn't doing his own thing. The Father was directing his words and his actions. He knew that when he said, Lazarus, come forth, that a miracle would take place. And yet he wept. You know, those tears must have gone way back for an eternal son of God. I bet he wept too in the Garden of Eden when the Adam and Eve believed the devil over the Lord, ate the forbidden fruit, and death entered in to the human race. Folks, death was never supposed to be there. It came in by sin and disobedience. The Lord wept. Don't ever let the devil tell you, I don't care what your situation is. Well, God doesn't care. Folks, God cares. Even though he sees your future too. Even though he knows you may have the answer. When you're weeping before the Lord, remember this. Jesus weeps too. John eleven thirty six. Then Jesus said, See how he loved him? And some of them said, Could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind have, have kept this man from dying? What were they? They were disappointed in Jesus. Folks, we sometimes get disappointed in God because things don't happen the way we think they should happen. But we can't see the big plan. Amen? Everyone was disappointed in Jesus. Mary, Martha, all the people gathered at the tomb of Lazarus. They were disappointed because Jesus hadn't shown up in time. Sometimes we think God didn't show up in time. Folks, God is never late. It's only for the glory of God that things happen in our lives. God is in control. Turn and tell your neighbor, God is in control whether you see it or not. Well, let's read on. Uh, John eleven thirty eight. 38. Then Jesus, again groaning him himself, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay against it. Don't let Resurrection Sunday slip out of your mind as I'm telling you about Lazarus because they're tied together. Jesus said, take away the stone, Martha. And the sister of him who was dead said, Lord, by this time, there's a stench. She's been dead four days. Wow. Folks, back then, if you were dead four days... There was a stench. It was horrible. People that go on crime scenes, the forensic pathologists or whatever they call it, they can hardly stand it. They wear masks. They, put, they try to have something under their nose to take the smell away. That's a long time to be dead. Why was it four days? Because Jesus wanted to show everybody absolutely, positively, beyond every shadow of doubt, that he was the resurrection. Amen. Though you may die, because of Jesus, you will live. <clears throat> and Jesus said to her, Did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was laying, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you. You that you've heard me, and I know that you always hear me, but because the people are standing by, I said this, that they may believe that you sent me. He, he wasn't praying out loud for himself. He knew what was going to happen. He was just narrating for the crowd, folks, so that they would understand. Now when he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, it was no little timid. Uh, Lazarus, if you can, could you come out of the tomb? 
That's not how Jesus. Yeah. Let me tell you what, when Jesus comes back, it isn't going to be with a whisper, it's going to be with a shout. Amen? He cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he who had died came out bound hand and foot with grave clothes. His faith was wrapped with a cloth, and Jesus said to them, Loose him and let him go. Jesus did this to prove before he himself rose from the grave that he was the resurrection, not just for himself, but for all of us. Hallelujah. Though he may die, he shall live. And Lazarus came forth. He must have kind of hopped or waddled because they had him all wrapped up like a mummy, grave clothes. He was wrapped up. He couldn't. In other words, he was wrapped up in a way that he could not lose himself. They all could have just sat there and watched him hop around or fall on the ground and roll. He couldn't get loose. He was all tied up, folks. And they said to him, loose him. He said to the crowd, loose him and let him go. You know, we're dead in our trespasses and sins. Amen? And when we come forth alive from the dead because of Resurrection Sunday and with Christ, as we're going to see on Resurrection Sunday, the voice of Jesus still says to the church, loose them and let them go. Get the grave clothes off of them. Get the old dead things off that person and let them live a new life in the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And you know, all this happened before Jesus himself would be laid in the tomb. All this happened to prepare the disciples and us too to understand what was going to take place on Easter Sunday. And all this happened and they missed it completely. They did. But they got it later on. Before I go to the Easter Sunday morning, let's let's go just stop at Good Friday a little bit. The crucifixion of Christ and pick up our story there. Jesus had been arrested. He'd been found not guilty by Pilate, but the people shouted, crucify him, crucify him. We talked about it last week because, you know, they weren't looking for a Messiah. They were looking for a quick fix to their situation with Rome and Israel. And when he looked like he wasn't going to give them what they want, they said, crucify him. It says, now as they came out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name, and they compelled him to bear his cross, carrying the cross of Christ. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, That is to say, place of the skull, they gave him sour wine mixed with gall to drink. And when he tasted it, he would not drink. That's got to be some horrible stuff. Then they crucified him, divided his garments, casting lots that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. They divided my garments among them, and and for my clothing they did cast lots. Sitting down, they kept watch over him there, and they put up, Over his head, the accusation written against him, this is Jesus, king of the Jews. Then the robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and one on the left. They put up the accusation, but they they messed up. It didn't say he says he was king of the Jews. They put it up in a couple different languages. They just said, king of the Jews. I guess they didn't mess up. They had the right thing up in the the first place. And those who passed by blasphemed. It means they cursed at him, wagging their heads and saying, you will destroy destroy the temple and build it in three days. Save yourself. If you are the son of God, come down from the cross. Let me tell you something about Jesus. He could have, just with a thought, just with a thought, the thought vaporized all of creation and said we're starting over. Just with a thought. And yet he stayed there and listened to them, cursed him. 
for us, folks, for our sins. Likewise, the chief priests also, mocking with the scribes and elders, said, he saved others. He cannot save uh, himself. He cannot save if he is the king of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross, and we will believe him. Oh, they needed another miracle. They hadn't seen the blind and the deaf and the lame. And everybody knew Lazarus was raised from the dead. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now if he will have him. For he has said, I am the son of God. Even the robbers who were crucified with him reviled him with the same thing. Now from the sixth hour until the ninth hour, there was darkness over the whole land from the sixth hour to the ninth hour. Some people say, oh, there was an eclipse of the sun. There might have been. I don't know. That was a long time ago. But I know what was happening, what the darkness was. That was our sins, folks. For all time, from that period to the point that Jesus is coming back again when the period of grace ends, he gathered the sins of everyone who would believe upon himself. You say, how does that happen? That was 2,000 years ago. Jesus said, I'm the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. He is time. He created time. He's outside of time. That's why the blood of Jesus washes a lost sinner today even though it was shed on the cross 2,000 years ago. The sins of all mankind, everyone would call on the name of the Lord, were gathered to Christ from the sixth hour to the ninth hour, and it was black. And our sinless Savior hung on the cross, suffering for our sins. But here's something that nobody, probably in most of the churches that are having Easter Sunday this morning, understands and nobody shares. He didn't just gather our sins. He gathered us. Each and every one who would belong to him for all time, somehow we were crucified with Christ. Romans 6, 5. If, you have, if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, surely, certainly, we shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Then Paul writes, knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him. When? On that cross. On that day. We were taken, he only took our sins, he took our old sinful dead cells in himself that the body of sin might be done away with and we should no longer be slaves to sin. You know, there's a bunch of cemeteries all over the place. There's one up in Sandy Creek as you drive through and you know what, there are, nobody's sinning in that cemetery. You know why? Because death destroys sin. The body of sin is done away with. Romans 6, 7, For he who has died has been freed from sin. Where's our freedom from sin? It took place on Good Friday, on that cross. God nailed every ordinance that was against us to the cross of Calvary. Jesus didn't go to the cross alone. He took our sins and he took us. If we've been united together in the likeness of his death, if we understand we were crucified with Christ, certainly, now here's some good news, certainly we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Hallelujah. Not maybe, not might, but certainly. Who understands this? You know, Easter is not something we rejoice that just happened 2,000 some odd years ago when Jesus proved everything that he said. He did all that and more. He won the victory. And we're not spectators, folks. We were there. 
Galatians 2.20, Paul says, I have been crucified with Christ. Not I will be, not I might be, not I'm working on it day by day. He says it's a done deal. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. Glory to God. In the life I now live in the flesh, I live by, the, by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Well, let's go back to the story in Matthew here in the 46th verse of uh, chapter 27. It was the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama, sabachthani, that is God, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? You know, you think Father God forsook Jesus on the cross? I don't think so. But you got to remember something. That the Heavenly Father, all the sin was gathered on Jesus. And what Father God did for just an instant, and Jesus knew it, was he just blinded his eyes to the horror of that sin. What do the cherubim on the Ark of the Covenant do? They are the covering cherubim. Our God is without sin, and yet <laughs> Jesus, who was God, took all of our sin. Well, Father God, for that instance, there was a separation between a righteous and, and perfect Heavenly Father and Jesus, who had all the sinners who would come to him, calling his name for all time and all their sins on himself. Of all the things that Jesus suffered, that was the worst. That's right. The separation for that instant from the Father. And immediately, some of those who were there, when they heard this, said, The man is calling Elijah. Immediately, one ran and took a sponge and filled it with sour wine, put it on a reed, and offered him to drink. Then the rest said, Let him alone. Let's see if Elijah will come to save him. Boy, they were a nice bunch, huh? And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice. He yielded up his spirit. And behold, the veil of the temple was torn from top to bottom. Folks, nobody could reach the top. Who tore that? God did himself. God tore the veil. What was the purpose of the veil? Was to separate the holy of holies from the holy place. It was the, the most holy place. It was where the ark was. It was where the ark of the covenant, and you couldn't even go in there, but once a year, the high priest, nobody could, or you would die, folks. And yet God took that temple and he tore it. You know why? Because there's no more need for a veil. Christ is the veil, his flesh. He is the only way to the Father. No one comes to the Father but by me, through faith in Jesus Christ. Well, what happened at that instance? Now, I can remember growing up, I grew up in a denominational church for all the time I was in church. I never, ever heard this verse read. Never heard it read. Ever. Ever. It's been there in the Bible, but they just don't read it. Matthew 27, 52. What happened when Jesus died in the, on the cross and the veil of the temple was torn from top to bottom? Folks, it was a big event. It says, the graves were opened. And the bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep, those who had believed in Christ, they rose from the dead. You tell me that the Romans and the chief priests and scribes and the religious leaders in Israel didn't know that he was the Christ when all of a sudden the graves opened up and all these people rose out of the dirt and started walking around? People they knew had died? Don't ever say that God didn't give people notice of what was real. And coming out of the graves after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. Hallelujah. 
They were alive from the dead, folks. Why did that happen? Because God's showing us something, amen? Death couldn't hold Jesus. And folks, death is not going to hold us either. So when the centurion and those with him were guarding Jesus, saw the earthquakes and those things that were happening, they feared greatly, saying, truly, this was the Son of God. Resurrection Sunday is our story, folks. It's the story of our resurrection. And I want to read a little further. And the women who followed Jesus from Galilee and ministered to him were looking on from afar. Where were the men? They didn't get it, folks. They just didn't get it. It says... Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of Zebedee's sons. Now when evening had come, there was a rich man, man from Arimathea named Joseph, who he himself had become a disciple of Jesus. And this man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. It says, Then Pilate commanded the body to be given to him, and when Joseph had taken the body, he wrapped it in clean linen cloth, laid it in a new tomb, which he had hewn out of the rock, and rolled a large stone against the door of the tomb and departed. And Mary Magdalene was there, and the other Mary sitting opposite the tomb. On the next day, which followed the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered together with Pilate, saying, Sir, remember while he was still alive how, he deceived, how that deceiver said, After three days I will rise? Therefore, command that the tomb be made secure until the third day, lest his disciples come by night and steal him away, and say to the people, He is risen from the dead. So the last deception will be worse than the first. And Pilate said to them, You have a guard, go your way, make it secure, as you know how. Then they went and made the tomb secure, sealing the stone and setting the guard. Folks, Back then, if you were a guard and you were placed to guard something and all of a sudden you decided you were out, you know, in the coffee shop or whatever, I don't know, didn't have coffee shops, but you would be put to death. It was a serious thing. When you were told to guard something, don't you fall asleep, don't you? Because life back then, that was, they had one penalty for most things. That was death. Probably be nailed to a cross someplace. And again, remember as I read this story, okay? Jesus is in the tomb. Guess who else is in the tomb? You and I are. All of our sins were nailed to the cross. You know when you die, the sins are gone, amen? Our sins didn't make it past the cross. They didn't make it past the cross. Jesus was buried in the tomb. He just had our old man, who was a sinner, in him, buried with him. Turn and tell your neighbor, this is my story too, so listen up. We were crucified with him. And when they were, and we were in Christ, so when they laid him in the tomb, we were all there. It says in uh, Matthew 28, 1, Now after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary and the other Mary came to see the tomb. Again, where were the men? <laughs> Folks, they didn't get it. They didn't believe it. They just figured it's all over. Even though Jesus told them he would rise from the dead. What day of the week was it? The day we gather in worship the day of the week that we celebrate the greatest miracle that ever happened, that our God rose from the dead. And folks, we did too. And behold, there was a great earthquake, and the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. His countenance was like lightning, and his clothing as white as snow, and the guard shook for fear of him, and became like dead men. They weren't going to let just anybody roll the stone away, but
but are they going to stop a holy angel of God? Not a chance. Then the angel answered and said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus, who is crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come and see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell his disciples he is risen from the dead, and indeed he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. So they went out quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to bring the other disciples' word. They came and held him by the feet. Excuse me. So they went out of the tomb quickly with great fear and joy and ran to bring his disciples' word. So they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. I, mean, I must have missed something here. Let me back up a little. Oh, okay. Um, he is not here, but he, oh, I missed verse 6 somehow in there. Well, they had, they had found Jesus. I must have skipped it when I printed this out. He is not here. He is risen from... He is risen, he said. Come and see the place where the Lord lay and go quickly to tell the disciples he is risen from the dead. And indeed, he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. So they went out quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to bring his disciples' word. So they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. And Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brethren to go to Galilee and they will see, and there they will see me. You know something about Christianity? It is not a spectator sport. What's a spectator sport? You go sit, you watch a performance, you watch a game. It's not a spectator sport. If you're a Christian, you're a part of the Easter story. It's your story. Amen. We were crucified with him. Paul said, I am crucified with Christ Nevertheless, I live. Our old man is dead. Our sins are gone. Colossians 2.12, what does it say? It backs up everything that I'm saying. Who's been water baptized here, if you don't mind raising your hand? Almost everybody here has been water baptized. Yep. What happens during baptism? I've done a lot of baptisms. You hold the person under and then you... Talk for 15, 20 minutes. And you let them up, right? No, that's wrong. But, but you do bury them beneath the water, amen? A baptism is not complete unless you bring the person up out of the water. Otherwise, you're in big trouble. I did lose one in the Moose River downstream, but they came up. We did a baptism outside. <laughs> Hallelujah. The burial is important, but what is even more important than when you say buried with Christ through baptism is the resurrection. Hallelujah. Colossians 2.12, Buried with him in baptism, you were also raised with him through faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. And you being dead in your trespasses and the un circumcision of your flesh has made, has made alive together with him and has forgiven all your trespasses, has wiped away the handwriting of the requirements that was against us, that was contrary to us, and has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to his cross, having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Next time the devil starts to accuse you, you just say, Mr. Devil, excuse me. My sins were nailed to the cross with Christ. If you want to find them, go look for them there. Resurrection Sunday is Jesus' day of victory, but it is our day too. We are not spectators. One of the most quoted verses of the entire Bible that people don't understand, and I'm going to close here in just a second, is therefore if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation, old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. What does it mean to be in Christ? 
It means that you said, Jesus, be my Lord and Savior. And the Lord knew what you were going to say. He's taken you in himself. And when he rose from the dead, folks, we rose up in newness of life to walk as new creations in Christ. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. What did Jesus say? I am the resurrection. He who believes in me, though he die, yet will he live. John 3, 17 says God didn't send his Son into the world to condemn the world. That's not why Jesus came. We're already condemned. But the world through him might be saved. When does the resurrection story, when does resurrection story become more than a story? When do you become more than a spectator? When does it become your story? When you call on the name of the Lord. It says in Romans 10, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with your heart one believes into righteousness and with the mouth, With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Maybe Jesus is your Lord and Savior. You've been saved for years and years. You know, Resurrection Sunday is a good day to recommit your faith. If you've never really called on the name of the Lord, now is the time. Today is the day of salvation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just pray after me and say, Lord Jesus... I know I'm a sinner. I know you died for my sins. I know you took them all on yourself. On the cross of Calvary. I know you died. You were buried. And you took me in you. By faith. And when you rose from the dead. I rose in you. Lord Jesus, I confess that you are my Savior. You died for my sins. I repent of them all, and I am alive, alive from the dead, a new creature. In your name I pray, Jesus. Amen. 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 You are dismissed, and happy Resurrection Sunday. Amen.